Hi friends! Today we will learn about buoyancy. So let's start. We often see that some substances float while others sink. Let's conduct a small experiment on this. Take a needle, a small piece of foil, and a glass of water. Now put the needle in the glass of water. It sinks. Now now, place the piece of foil on the water. You will see it floats. Why does this happen? Why does the small needle sink while the piece of foil floats? We will try to learn the science behind this phenomenon. Whenever we immerse an object in a fluid, it may be any fluid, the force exerted by the fluid on the immersed object is from all sides. But the upward force that is exerted by the liquid on the object is called as buoyant force. And this buoyant force decides whether the object will float or sink. For example, you see big ships floating in the water. Why are they able to float? It is because the upward force exerted by the water on the ship or the buoyant force is large enough to support its weight or it's more than the gravity experienced by the ship. Now, why is the buoyant force large enough to support the shape of the ship? This is what we'll be learning now. So, till now we have learned that whenever we see an object floating, it means that the buoyant force experienced by that object is more than the gravity experienced by the object. And whenever an object sinks, it means that the buoyant force experienced by the object is less than the gravity experienced by the object. So buoyancy is the upward force because of which things float in water. Now the question is, why does a steel block sink in the water while huge ships float? Why is the buoyancy experienced by the steel block less than the buoyancy experienced by a huge ship, so much so that the ship is able to float on water? Now, here comes the most important point that you need to learn about buoyancy. Buoyant force experienced by the object is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the immersed part of the object. I repeat, because this is the most important point to understand of the concept. The upward force exerted by the water or the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the immersed part of the object. Now, let's understand it with the help of an example. Here we have the case of a ship. Huge ships. A ship is built in such a manner that the weight of water displaced by the ship is more or equal to the weight of the ship. So, it experiences buoyant force equal to its weight, or even more than its weight. This is why it does not sink. Next example is a needle. What happens when you put a needle in water? It sinks. The needle sinks because the weight of the fluid displaced by the needle is less than the weight of the needle. This is why buoyant force experienced by the needle is less than its own weight. So this buoyant force will not be able to support the weight of the needle and the needle will sink. Now let's repeat the concept of buoyancy. Buoyant force experienced by the object is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced by the immersed part of the object. So if the weight of the displaced water is more than the weight of the object or equal to the weight of the object, only then does the object float. And this concept was given by Archimedes of Syracuse in 212 BC and it is called Archimedes' Principle. For objects floating and sunken, and in gases as well as liquids, Archimedes' principle states that
Any object wholly or partially immersed in a fluid is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the liquid displaced by the object. This is the standard definition of Archimedes' principle. Now we will be learning the relationship between buoyancy and density. Take two glasses, each with the same water level, but one glass with less dense water or fresh water, and the other glass with a higher density, that is two spoons of dissolved salt, so that the density of the water increases. We learned that buoyant force applied by the liquid to the immersed object is equal to the weight of the water displaced. The egg displaces water equal to its volume, but the density of the egg is more than the water. So the water displaced by the egg, which is equal to its volume, will have less weight than water. So fresh water displaced by the egg is not able to support the weight of the egg. Buoyant force, or the upward force applied to an object, is equal to the amount of water it displaces. So the amount of water displaced by the egg will have a lower weight than the egg, because the density of the egg is more than the density of the water. This is why the egg sinks. Now take out the egg and place it in the glass with the dissolved salt. To your surprise, the egg will not sink. Why is that? Let's learn. We know buoyant force or the upward force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. And if the weight of the fluid displaced by the object is more than the weight of the object, the object is able to float. Now come to our example. In the case when the egg is placed in the water, dissolved with two spoons of salt, the density of the egg is equal to the water salt solution. This is why the volume of water displaced by the egg has a weight equal to the egg. This is why the displaced water is able to support the weight of the egg. Or the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the egg, which is why the egg does not sink, but instead floats. The level of the egg in the water will depend on the amount of salt in the water, or the density of the water. If you add more salt, the egg will float up higher, as the amount of buoyant force will increase due to the increased density of water. You can experiment with this again by taking two glasses of water with different amounts of dissolved salt. The egg will be higher in the water with more salt, and the obvious reason is the higher density of water. So let's repeat what we learned. We learned that anything, when immersed in water, experiences a buoyant force, which is equal to the weight of the displaced water. And if the weight of the displaced water is equal or more than the weight of the immersed object, only then will the object float. And this is possible only if the immersed object has a lower density than the water. Here we have another example to explain it. Take a ball, which is hollow from the inside. Now place it on the water. The ball will float. Now take a ball, which is firm from the inside and not hollow. Place it on the water. It sinks. So from here, you can see that the hollow ball has air inside it, which gives it a lower density than the water. In the case of this hollow light weight ball, a small amount of displaced water is heavier than the weight of the ball. And we know that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced water. So the weight of the displaced water is more than the weight of the ball, so it's able to float. But in the case of the solid ball, which is heavy, the displaced water has less weight than the weight of the ball. And we know the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced water. So here the buoyant force is less than the weight of the ball. Which is why the heavy ball sinks and the light ball floats.
Here we have another interesting example to explain the relationship between density and buoyancy. The Dead Sea. Have you ever heard of the Dead Sea? It's in Israel. It is said that no one sinks in the Dead Sea, and you can easily float in the Dead Sea in positions in which you will be able to sink in your regular pool water. Now why does this happen? Why does no one sink in the Dead Sea? And why are we able to float in positions that you cannot float in on the pool water or in any other water? The density of water in the Dead Sea is very high. It is dissolved with many minerals and oils, which makes the density of water very high. And the higher the density of the fluid, the greater the buoyant force. So it makes things float more easily. As we know, an object experiences buoyant force equal to the weight of the liquid that it displaces. So the greater the density of the liquid, the greater its weight will be and the higher the buoyant force will be. So we will displace water equal to our body weight, but the same water displaced by the body has a greater density in the case of the Dead Sea but it has a lower density in the case of pool water. So we are displacing water which has more weight than the water we displace in the case of a pool. So the water displaced by a body in the Dead Sea gives us more buoyant force and we are able to float very easily. But in the case of pool water, we displace water equal to our weight. But that water has a lower density and a lower weight, so it gives us less buoyant force. So this was a great example to learn the relationship between density and buoyancy. The higher the density of the fluid, the higher its buoyant force. Here we have another interesting example. Take three liquids, water, some vegetable oil, and some alcohol. The densities of these three liquids are in the order. Alcohol, oil, and water arrange from decreasing to increasing. Alcohol has the least density. Water has the maximum density out of these three liquids. Now let's see what happens if we mix all of them together. Take a glass of water. Now slowly pour some vegetable in it. And then pour some alcohol in the same glass. You can see three distinct layers. The most dense liquid, that is water, is on the bottom. In the middle, you have your oil. And on the top, you have alcohol because it has the least density amongst these three liquids. Now, let's learn the relationship between buoyancy and volume. The greater the volume in the object, the greater the buoyant force it will experience. Take a football. Dip it in water. First off, the football has a lower density than the water, so this is why it does not sink. Secondly, the more you press it in the water, the more buoyant force or upward force it will experience. And the reason is that the more you dip it in the water, the more amount of water is displaced and the upward force is equal to the weight of the displaced water. As you increase the amount of displaced water, it experiences a greater buoyant force. Here we have an example of big ships. The shape of the ship is uniquely made such that it displaces an amount of water more than or equal to its weight, which is why it easily floats. So friends, today we have learned what is buoyancy and the relationship between density, buoyancy, and volume?